Hello everyone. It's been a while since I've been able to do a video. Um, didn't mean to totally disappear a lot this winter. It's just been sick a lot. In this past week or so we've been had the stomach flu at our place, so we haven't been doing too much. But uh, spring is slowly starting to come here. Today's supposed to get up to about 12 Celsius, and so a lot of this should melt off. You can see our main garden is almost all uncovered. Um, but the hill and whatnot, and a lot of our back area that's more shaded is still pretty, pretty well snowed. We have a new puppy on the homestead. He's a Boston Terrier Pug Mix. He's three months old. And he's, he's doing really good. And he'll be glad to see the snow go too, because he's not a big fan of it. haven't got anything started in the greenhouse yet. It needs a bit of repair before we can use it. That's hopefully on the to-do list for today. We have to fix the window on the top part of the door and then the one on the top left. Uh, the frame fell apart over this winter. We had tons and tons of really bad windstorms and it did a number on a lot of things around here. This garden is slowly thawing out hard to believe that this time last year we were planting. This spring is actually much more normal for our area compared to the past four seasons we've had. So I'm actually hoping that means we'll have a normal summer with a normal amount of rain and no massive droughts or floods. One project we did yesterday was we were pruning the apple trees. I took some before and after pictures. They were really, really overgrown. And looking at them again, actually, I could see that they still need some more pruning. But they were probably about 12-year-old trees or older, and we didn't want to do too much and possibly damage the trees all at once. You like that big branch, huh? <laughs> That's a bit big for you. But uh, I found a great channel that has some really great uh, tree pruning videos. A uh, fellow over in England, and I can't remember his name right now. I think it's Stephen. And I will put a link below to his channel if it helps anybody. He's got some great videos for doing mostly apple trees. He's got an 800 tree orchard. And uh, he's also got some up, I think, for pear trees and lots of other general videos that are pretty cool. There, put the puppy inside so he could have his breakfast while I finish this. Um, yeah, as I was mentioning, we still have quite a bit of snow. You can see it from here. Um, it's not that deep, maybe eight inches or so right now, on average. Um, sorry, I hope it's not too noisy. It's starting to get windy out here. We're supposed to get a fair amount of rain today. And Wednesday, I think, too, and that'll get rid of the rest of the snow and clean it up. Fools, last week we had a three-day snowstorm come in, and it looked just like January outside. You can hardly see out the window. Uh, that was about the same time we all got sick, so... I wasn't up to coming out and showing you guys our wonderful spring weather. Uh, no sign of the rhubarb coming up yet, but I do have um, some daffodils and my comforts coming up on the other side of the property. The gooseberries are starting to bud. Puppy keeps trying to eat those despite the thorns all over the branches. Keep trying to keep them away from the side of the yard. We're going to be reusing this area for the tomatoes last year. The clover's starting to come back a little bit. And uh, the black fabric stalks are still here. They just need some tidying up. And hopefully they'll do better this year. As I mentioned, we're hoping to fix up the greenhouse there later today. And I've already got my soil and got to go through my seeds and get some stuff ready to start. We did a little pruning on my plum tree. Nothing too major on this one yet, but it had some suckers that had to be taken off and then it had a big branch up the center. Man, it hurts to cut off so much tree, but it's better for the tree in the long run because it was coming up here and it was crossing the main leader and they were getting tangled up. So it would have ended up being a not a very strong branch and weakening the tree overall. 
and then with my uh, peach tree down here a couple years ago the side shoot on it which we should have taken off when it was little but this poor tree had been hit with the lawnmower and then the snow plow had almost destroyed it so I just left it to see what would happen and eventually it did take off um, but that side shoot last year had cracked because of the snow load I think it was or maybe it was the year before I don't remember and we had tied it and taped it up to help seal the trunk and this year we while it was pretty much healed there we cut the side branch off there's not a whole lot else going on in the, going on around here we've been working inside on the old summer kitchen I decided not to use it as an actual kitchen um, because we didn't want to put in all the plumbing and whatnot to have two kitchens basically side by side right now uh, we might do that in the future but what we're going to use it for right now is like a massive pantry and we do have the wood stove out there as well and I just love that new stove out. When I do my next video and show you the um, old room and how the renovations are coming I'll show you this, the stove. It's a Lakewood uh, Canadian brand and it, it heats. It's the best stove I've ever had. Um, let's see. We're probably going to be painting it today. We just have a few touch-ups to do. And once we get all the shelves up in there, I can get all the stuff out of my craft room that's on the other side of that kitchen, if you remember when the renovations were done. And I'll actually be able to get in there and use it, which will be great. Um, we do still have the old cook stove that we had in that room. But in order to have it under insurance, uh, the guidelines they wanted for it, because it's an old, old stove, were absolutely insane. It took up so much of the room that it really wasn't worth having in there. You could hardly walk. Even um, putting all the backing and everything behind it, they still wanted it so far out. And the fact is, you know, it's a bigger stove. It's. But anyway, we, we have it out here. And what I'm going to be doing is setting up an outdoor kitchen, or an outside summer kitchen. Um, this year for it. I think I've got an old sink somewhere too and I want to be able to do a lot of my canning outside. And I did that on our old farm when we first got married. The advantage now though is the little stove I had then, I'll try and find a picture of it, was one of those very tall narrow cook stoves that the only way to put wood in was to lift the lid off. So you had to take your pot of boiling water off, lift the lid up, put the wood in, and then put the pot back on. Obviously I did not pressure can on that because moving it that much would have not been good. But for doing tomatoes in a water bath canner it worked fine. But it was heavy. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to having it a little easier using a real cook stove outside than compared to that. But it'll keep the heat out of the house and that'll be great. <sighs> so lots and lots of projects planned for this year and hopefully, hopefully things will work out and come together and I'm hoping we have a good garden season. It seems to be more of a normal year so far. So if we don't get too much rain and no more extremes, maybe we'll be lucky, huh? Take care everyone.